morning guys, it's Geekonomics here again and today I am continuing with the derivation of these supply curves. Today we're going to be looking at the derivation of the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. Now, some of my students charged out of the classroom the other day having learned this. This was like a, a, a light bulb moment for them and this was all the, this was the culmination indeed of four years of work almost all coming together at once. So let's get stuck into this. Let's see what we've got here. So we've got our typical macro diagram on the top here, price level and real output. And then once again we're going to be looking how this maps into the labour market diagram which is beneath. And in the same way as we considered the classical aggregate supply, I'm starting off initially at point A here and I am saying that this price PA enables the labour market to clear, in other words for there to be equilibrium in the labour market at a real wage of W star and an employment level of Q star. Now we'll say a little bit more about what this employment level signifies for Keynesians in a short while. So. What will happen then in the Keynesian aggregate supply scenario whenever there is an increase in the price level? So price level rises from A to B. And so we can take our price line here across to B. Now once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's very important that we consider what is going on in the labour market whenever we have an increase in the price level. But more specifically, what is happening to the real wage W over P. So we've got a fixed money wage, as you know, and the price level here has just gone up. It's gone up from A to B. So that means that in overall terms, the value of the real wage has fallen, ladies and gentlemen. And so we would end up on our labour market diagram, we would obviously end up somewhere down here. So we call this W over P at a price of B. Now, that is obviously a point of disequilibrium. That is not a market clearing equilibrium, that is a point of disequilibrium. And we can see here that the demand for labour is very much greater than the supply of labour. Now in order to restore equilibrium, as was the case in the classical aggregate supply curve, in the classical model, what we need to see happening is we need to be moving along these curves, so we need to be moving up the supply curve, up the demand curve, in order to restore equilibrium back at Q star W star, which would therefore put us back in line with this level of real output Y. So what needs to happen in order to restore the equilibrium? Well we've seen that price has gone up therefore in order to restore the equilibrium the money wage needs to go up. If price rises by 10% the money wage needs to rise by 10% also. Now that would happen and would restore equilibrium back to this point. Now Keynesians of course argue that individuals are more than happy to take an increase in their money wage. I mean, who wouldn't be? Hey, you'd be mad, wouldn't you? So Keynesians would argue that people, just in the same way as classics do, that people are more than happy to take an increase in their money wage, and this will restore equilibrium back to this position. And so we can say actually at any point between A and B, regardless of what happens to the price level there, if it's rising from A to point C here or D here, whatever is happening, the market is flexible enough to accommodate that because the money wage will rise and restore the equilibrium in the labour market. Now the interesting uh, point on this one is what happens whenever there is a reduction in the price level. So what if the price level falls rather than it being at uh, point B or point A, what if the price level falls to point C? Down here. So once again, let's consider the real wage. Money wage remains the same, price level has fallen, therefore 
overall, the value of the real wage has got that in the wrong direction. The value of the real wage has obviously increased because the price level has fallen. So where would that put us on our labour market diagram? Once again, we will be above equilibrium position. This will be another point of disequilibrium in the labour market. And we'll be at this price, W over PC. Now you'll remember, and if you've watched my previous video with regard to classical economists, classical economists would argue that the market is so flexible that it will even adjust from this relatively higher real wage back to equilibrium. But Keynesians argue something different. And this, ladies and gentlemen, this is the light bulb moment that I was talking about. What needs to happen here, ladies and gentlemen, in order to restore equilibrium if the price level has fallen? In order to restore equilibrium, the money wage also needs to fall. So we need to see this. If this falls by 10%, the money wage needs to fall by 10%. But Keynesians, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you've heard this term before, Keynesians argue that wages are sticky in a downwards direction. Now what does that mean? It simply means that individuals, and it's rational, isn't it? Rational individuals, we're all very happy to take a pay rise, but don't ask me to take a pay cut, please. I don't want to take a pay cut. So wages are sticky in a downwards direction. Now that creates a problem because this point of disequilibrium, if wages are sticky downwards, will then persist. And so the demand for labour actually at this uh, wage would obviously be here. Now, if the demand for labour is there, the level of output, which is consistent with that level of labour, would obviously be here. Why? At the price of C. And so, actually, what would happen is rather than um, equilibrium moving in the labour market and adjusting back to here, the equilibrium level at a price of PC will get stuck somewhere around here because of this inflexibility in the labour market. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is the reason why the Keynesian aggregate supply curve has this kink in it, because of this inflexibility in the labour market. And of course, what does this signify to you, ladies and gentlemen? Here's the demand for labour, here's the supply. Supply being greater than demand, that is unemployment. And of course, Keynes argues that the markets aren't sufficiently flexible to cure one of the market failures, being unemployment, it requires intervention in order to move the level of output and the level of employment towards this level. Now I said at the beginning of this video that we obviously call this level something specific, so as you know this is YF or some textbooks refer to YFE, so this is the full employment level of output. And so one of the fundamental problems in the Keynesian analysis of the economy is that because of this inflexibility in the markets, specifically in this instance the labour market, we get stuck and the economy gets stuck at lower levels of real output and that then requires government intervention in order to move it back to this level. Whereas in our classical model, which we looked at previously, the markets are just instantaneously so that we're always operating on the YN as referred to in the natural rate. Okay ladies and gents, going to leave it at that. Next video coming will be on the Phillips curve and how we can relate the Phillips curve also to this kind of derivation of supply curves and long run and short run Phillips curves. So that's it for now ladies and gentlemen. Keep subscribing. Got any questions by all means send me a message. I have no problem getting back to you on that. And uh, bye for now.